Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to the Toast and ha B. Friday, Friday, gotta get down on Friday. Everybody's looking forward to the weekend, weekend. Friday, Friday, getting down on Friday. Hello, Letter Deleu. Happy Friday. Happy motherfucking Friday, bitch. It's exciting. It's been actually, I feel like, a very fair week. Sometimes the week feels very long. Sometimes the week feels short. I feel like this week felt fair. I mean, it's all subjective, you know? I feel like a newborn at home, so it's it's been a very long week. Like, I'm so... If you couldn't tell by my, like, like little extra oomph I put in the Friday song, like, I'm overjoyed. Overjoyed for this day of Fry. Yeah. Oh, my God. We had a night. Oh, my God. Did we have a night? Like, a real newborn night. Every two hours. So we were told that like it's so important for Theo to eat. And we've been so like hell bent on making sure he eats enough. I think yesterday we really overfed him. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, was he shit in his pants every two hours last night. Like my whole house is covered in poop. Thank God I'm like getting rid of pretty much all my furniture. Like every rug is covered in poop. There's poop on the couch. There's poop on the bed. There's poop everywhere. Damn. Yeah, it was a really hard night. And I can't even complain because Ben did so much more than me. And he's not even complaining, but I have my period, so like it made it harder. And there we go, everyone. You can mark that off on your calendars. And by the way, it's like day three or four of my period, and I didn't even bring it up. Yeah, you didn't bring it up like day one. Well, sometimes you have a period that like joins you on day one and like makes itself known. That's most of the time. It's like it'll rock your world day one. Day one was kind of quiet for me this this month. I feel like periods day one usually solve my problems. Like, oh, I've been feeling bloated and irritable, and it's like Thank heavens the period has arrived. It's the days before that really get me. No, for me, it's like when I get my period, I'm like, oh, that's why I've been eating so much. That's always what it is. But I'm like always eating, you know? Yeah, but at least once a month, like you have an excuse. I have something to blame it on. Yeah. So we just had a night and a half. And tonight, Ben's wonderful mother has agreed to watch Theo for the night. Like, I need to sleep. We have not slept, like, uh, soundly in, like, 11 days. My eye twitch is on fleek. I know. Everyone who has, like, actual children is rolling their eyes at me. Please, like, I'm doing the the best that I can. I need a break. Like, (laughs) I'm not okay. So Theo's staying at his grandparents tonight. And honestly, I will miss him dearly. But, like, my God, am I excited. Are you going to go out? I'm, I'm going to go to dinner, like a nice civilized dinner, but I would like to be in bed by 10 o'clock. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, few things. Okay. One, I started Matthew Perry's book, and I just have to say I am in love with it. I'm so glad. It's amazing. Like, if you're into Friends, obviously there's so many good, like, Friends things, but if you're just, like, into Hollywood... I didn't know like before he got cast in Friends, he was like really a part of like the Hollywood scene and all these people he came up with and how many amazing things happened to him before Friends. Cause we weren't really, Friends was aired in 1994. So this was like really before our time. Um, and I do have one complaint about the book, but you can definitely tell that the book is written by him. Cause I feel like if I sat down and had a conversation with Matthew Perry, I would know the exact type of personality I'd be sitting down with. He's very all over the place. Yeah. And like start a story and like, you're not sure why he said it. Maybe like three chapters later, he'll bring that story back up. It's a little all over the place, but it's so good. Yeah, I like when celebrities go out of their way and their editors and ghostwriters too, like go out of their way to make sure the book sounds like the person. Like I felt that way about Paris Hilton's book. Like it very much felt like her train of Voice. thought. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's really good. And there's a whole part in there about River Phoenix. I feel like River Phoenix is like a big Hollywood thing that was also before our time. Um but Matthew Perry, before he was famous, got like a role in, it was like his first big deal role, even though the movie flopped, in a movie with River Phoenix. And he was just like such an unhappy young kid, Matthew Perry. Like he was an alcoholic from literally the time he was 14. And he was just so unhappy. And he had like, a, not a hard family life, but he came from like a broken family. And this like couple of weeks that he spent in Chicago with River Phoenix were like the best of his life. Like when it was over, he like cried in his hotel room. He didn't want to go home. And... 
a few years later, River Phoenix famously died outside the Viper room over a dr uh, um, from a drug overdose. And Matthew Perry like lived down the block and he like heard the whole thing and he didn't know what was going on. He just like went to sleep and when he woke up the next morning, he like found out that his friend River Phoenix had died. There's just like so many like Hollywood moments in there. But I think the most interesting part of the book that I thought of you immediately is he like spends his whole life in therapy. He's very transparent about like the amount of money he spends and how much money he was making. He spent in total about $7 million on his recovery. And cause it was, he's been in it. He's been sober slash not sober for 40 years. Yeah. And he talks a lot about like what he learned in therapy and like why he was driven to drink. But when he was two months old, he was a very, very colicky baby his parents couldn't fucking take it. Like it was nonstop screaming. So when he was two months old, they took him to the doctor and something they did in the 60s was they prescribed him a narcotic. Barbital, phenobarbital. And it was like the only thing that worked. So he would literally, his parents would give it to him. He would literally be stoned and finally sleep for like a day. And I think he contributes that to his like chemical obsession, like inability to stay away from alcohol and narcotics to that, which was something that they did very commonly in the 60s. A hundred percent. I would that say crazy? that that's a fair assessment. And that's what's so crazy. Like, and that's the 60s. It's not even that far off, but things that were like common, common and medically done and recommended, like were so wrong. There's so many things like that. And it just like makes you wonder today. A hysterectomy. Uh, lobotomy. 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 Yeah, no, like what are we doing now that in 50 years they're gonna be like, I can't believe they did that in the early 2000s. No, in that it was like inhumane and cruel. I mean, I can think of a few things, honestly. Isn't that such a, I was, I was reading it, my mouth was hanging wide open. That is shocking, but just like add it to the list. Like they used to, you know, put those leeches on you to suck the blood yep. out of your, like all throughout history, like horrible medical ideas that were touted as revolutionary and you're crazy if you're against this. So also another thing about the book that I love, it's kind of reminds me when I watch The Crown, like the second I finish an episode of The Crown, I'm Googling 45,000 things. Yeah. There's so many things about, Matthew Perry, he's not like a Nepo baby because, no, I guess he is. So his parent, his dad like abandoned them in Canada, moved to LA, he had these dreams of being an actor and he ended up being the Old Spice guy, which at the time was like a, kind of how we would think of like the Dos Equis guy, like everybody knew him. Yeah, or Jake from State Farm. Right, right. But he wasn't like a celebrity, but he was like a working actor who had this gig and he was somewhat recognizable. So it afforded Matthew when he eventually moved to LA, like a little bit of clout and he went to like fancy private schools. His mom, I'm highlighting so many things from the book. His mom was in Canada. She became like a, she became kind of famous because she was Pierre Trudeau's press secretary and she was just this beautiful woman who was always, kind of like Tree Payne, you know, always photographed next to Pierre Trudeau and she became like a little bit of a socialite and then she got this gig for the national news and she became like kind of famous. And then she ended up marrying another news anchor who ended up being the host of Dateline who everyone's obsessed with, Keith Morrison, and they're still married to this day. But, wait, what was the point? Of, oh, so Matthew Perry weirdly like grew up hanging out with Justin Trudeau because they were like similar ages. And actually, he went through like a really rebellious phase. He was a really unhappy kid. And starting from the age of 10, he was just like a misery. He beat up Justin Trudeau. They got into like a fight, they threw arms. As friends or as foes? Like foe, foe. So they weren't friends. They were just like around each other a lot? Because of the parents. That's really funny. No, it's an amazing book. Like I'm, I think it's a great book club book. And then, of course, I'm up to the part now where he books friends and all of that is so interesting. It's like they knew the, the script hit the pilot scene and there's like a star of every pilot scene. It's like the show that's going to be big. I don't know if that happens so much anymore, but like I think it does. Real, but this was real. Like you got a time slot. Like it was all very like old school TV guide energy. And they just knew everyone in town was gunning for this role. And his best friend, he was best friends with this crew, Hank Azaria, who's that guy who does the Simpsons voice and this other guy Craig Craig got Chandler Matthew Perry wanted it so bad but he was locked into this dumb role for a sitcom that was going nowhere it was about <laughs> baggage cl claim handlers in the year 2100 he was like I was so desperate it was so stupid and he couldn't audition for anything else and he was so mad he was like Chandler is me I know it I know it his best friend gets the role but his best friend gets the role and also gets offered something else another role in another sitcom so he sits down with Hank Azaria and he's like guys what should I do I got both these roles should I take friends or should I take this other one and they said you got to take friends like they were really honest with him the guy takes the other role Haley Matthew Perry didn't speak for two years 
So then how did Matthew get out of his thing? Um, it flopped, and one of the showrunners was married to one of the showrunners from Friends and was like, hey, is your shit show going anywhere? We want Matthew Perry to read for Chandler. And they were like, yeah, you can have him. They just happened to be married. Got it. No, it's so good. Lisa Kudrow wrote the forward, and it's very quick. I started it last night. I'm further into it than I was Iron Flame. Got it. Well, I finished Iron it. Flame. I Maybe I will read it. I have so many things on my want to read list now. Like, obviously, I have to read Britney's book. But then I just, I think I'm going to go in a more nonfiction direction. I'm just not in a fiction state of mind right now. No. Uh, wait, not, so you're in a celebrity memoir is what you're looking yeah, for. Yeah, I want truth. Yeah, yeah. It's so good. I really highly recommend. Okay. Maybe just don't be like put off by his writing style. It's very erratic. That's but fine. there's good shit in there. Now, another thing that happened to me today that I wanted to talk about that I'm so upset about is that The Golden Bachelor was spoiled for me. Wow. I mean, I know that Gary is, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, engaged. I yeah, saw yeah, that. Yeah. That's I don't know who the woman is. I do. Like, and I don't even engage with any sort of Bachelor or Golden Bachelor things on TikTok. And this morning they served me two back-to-back -back videos of the winner and him oh. talking about their we wedding planning. Right. They're so getting the married time, in I January. Just tried to, the first time I tried to ignore it and put her name out of my mind. The second time I saw it, her name is solidified in my I'm mind. I'm so sorry. Do not ruin it for me. I will not. I'm so upset. Maybe you'll forget. You do have a bad memory. Yeah, but like now that I've seen it twice and now I'm talking about and it. And you're like, thinking about it. Yeah. I it's with me for, for good. Understood. So we've got a great show today. So many stories that actually um, came across my desk in the last 24 hours that I sent to you. Did you include all three? Of course I did. So I'm excited about that. I feel like it's kind of a juicy day for a Friday. It is kind of a juicy Friday with a juicy placenta. Yikes. <laughs> Yikes. You look beautiful. I got some new things for our family trip mm -hmm. and I couldn't wait to wear them. That's how I felt. That's the thing about, and I would just experienced something similar because one of our sponsors and a brand that I've just now become obsessed with and I really hadn't shopped at before is Loft. And they just sent me a huge box. And I'm like, oh, this is all perfect for our trip. I put it in the other room because I literally will just, I'm so, oh, 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 the outfit I'm wearing today was for my first box from Loft. And I'm like, oh, this is perfect for our trip. I've worn it five times. Yeah. I put the new box of stuff in another room. I, when you get stuff for a trip, like how do you not wear it before? Unless it's like beach clothes, but right. I just want to say like, we are on camera every day. Like why not wear our nice new things? And if I wear it again in four weeks, like it'll be okay. It'll be okay. But there's something exciting about having something new and wearing it for the first time on your trip. But it's also something exciting about having a nice new outfit for your big show. Where's your vest from? It's from Revolve. So cute. And my top is Revolve. My pants are Lululemon and my shoes are Ugg. My shoes are Ugg and my whole fit is loft i love it i need to shop more loft stuff because now i need more new stuff for the trip no, guys everyone's sleeping on loft i know we've been trying to tell them well honestly i i feel them i, I think with you were asleep association, you were asleep we all think like ann taylor loft is where we used to get like our pants for our internships like you don't think of it as like comfy cozy cute they had like a whole rebrand i think and it's really cute stuff i got like scarves gloves matching sets really cute stuff Oh, exciting. Yeah, I need to do a bit more shopping, but I also like have plenty of loungewear. I don't need to go crazy, but I just wanted like a few nice new things that I'm already wearing. So for the stories today, Tree Pain has lit the universe on fire. Yeah, we'll start I with that. I cannot wait to talk about that. Okay, so let's get into it. Okay. Without further ado, do, 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 here are the fast five stories that you need to know. And the fast five stories that you need to know are brought to you by Sunglass Hut. It's the season of giving, but finding that perfect gift can often feel like searching for a needle in a haystack. I think I found the solution to all of our gifting woes with all the shades of holiday at Sunglass Hut, where it's about the magic of gifting. Sunglasses are the best gift. They're one size fits all. They are the Every best gift. Everybody loves sunglasses. Also there's stocking so many stuffer. Yes, there's so many good brands. Whatever your price range is, mm -hmm. like you can find something. And Sunglass Hut is, in my opinion, the best way to shop for sunglasses. I actually just went in there to buy sunglasses for myself, and I also bought you a pair. She did. I had the most fabulous experience. Like the sales lady, Wendy, was so nice and so helpful. She just knew a lot about like my face shape. My face shape has changed. So I used to go for like the biggest, most oversized, but now I'm kind of into like a cat eye. And she was helping me figure out like if square or round frames. She, the the salespeople there are just like really smart, knowledgeable. 
super helpful and they just have the best styles and the best brands they have the biggest brands like Prada Dolce & Gabbana Versace Ray-Ban Oakley Burberry their wide range of sunglasses cover some of the hottest brands so go to Sunglass Hut to, to discover 10 unique shades such as Cutting Edge Versace with an innovative interchangeable lens or the Ray-Ban Mega Hawkeye along with so many other signature brands talk to their expert sales associates and try out the latest technology both in line online and in store so head over to Sunglass Hut and discover the special selection of shades in store and on sunglasshut.com there's the perfect for everyone this holiday so head over to your nearest store or go online to sunglasshut.com and check out their unique selection of shades available only at sunglass hut you're going to love what you find so visit them in store or online sunglass hut is the destination for all your holiday gifting needs today's episode is also brought to you by dipsy picture this you're hanging out in your favorite spot headphones are on and the world around you just fades away listening to one of dipsy's stories you're going to become immersed in a vivid world where every touch breath and stolen glance is felt with breathtaking intensity so I've become, you know, like kind of known in my community as a smut expert. I think people come to me, you know, for guidance. They do. And that's why I'm really excited about Dipsy to be working with them because this is taking it to the next level. Like sometimes you with smut, like it's like we said, it's a gateway. Like you start small and then you can't get enough. And Dipsy is for the experts. OK, mm -hmm. so Dipsy is an app full of hundreds of short, sexy audio stories designed by women for women. They bring scenarios to life with immersive soundscapes, realistic characters. You can discover stories about second chance romances, like whatever your favorite trope is. They have friends to lovers, you know, enemies to lovers, whatever your trope is. I personally love like childhood reconnection. Dipsy has it for you. There's a growing library of fantasy series if you're into like vampires, Greek gods, fairy smut. You can explore the bounds. New content is released every week, so in between listening to your favorite stories over and over again, you can always find something new to explore. Let Dipsy be your go-to place to spice up your me time, explore your fantasies, relax and unwind, or even heat things up with a partner. For listeners of this show, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash toast. That's 30 days of full access for free when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash toast dipsystories.com slash toast today's episode is also brought to you by Rakuten Rakuten is the most rewarding way to shop and save because their members earn cash back on everything that they buy Rakuten is a shopping platform that partners with, with over 3,500 stores across every category. So that's beauty, clothing, electronics, home, department stores, pets, etc. You are already shopping at your favorite stores. So why not save a little more while doing it? It's really a no-brainer. So for the holiday time, we're all spending so much money when we're shopping online for gifts for ourselves, gifts for others. And just being a member of Rakuten is just a no-brainer. It's literally the easiest thing on the planet and you will get a cash back at over 3,700 stores. So wherever you shop, like Macy's, Adidas, Walmart, Nike, Bloomingdale's, hello, Levi's, Urban Outfitters, Blue Mercury, YSL Beauty, Zappos, Wine.com, Samsung, the list goes on. So many of the most fabulous places that you're gonna be shopping this holiday season will give you cash back when you're a Rakuten member. It's so obvious. Neiman Marcus, Saks Fifth Avenue, there's literally no reason not to become a Rakuten member. So it's just a rewarding way to shop this holiday season. If you're into cash back, which I don't know who wouldn't pay, Rakuten has 17 million members who are already saving and their members have earned over $4.6 billion in cash back. So get that Rakuten app for free and download the free browser extensions. You'll find the best deals, sales, and coupons. They do the work for you. So searching for a coupon code, you don't have to do that anymore. They will save you time. They will save you money. The app is free. The browser extension is free. Do it. Download it. Become a member. Change your life. Thank you, Rakuten. Thank you, Turdy. You're welcome. Our first story, Taylor Swift's publicist, Tree Payne, slams gossiper Dumois over the insane Joe Alwyn marriage ceremony claim. So here's what happened. Dumois got a blind item about tailored, very long, about Joe and nonsense, the song Glitch, their relationship timeline, whatever. Then Dumois posted that with the caption on top of it saying, she did have a ceremony in either 2020 or 2021 in the UK, and it was described to me as a marriage by more than one person. It was never made legal. I will die on this hill. Put it on my tombstone. I have no reason to lie. I could give a shit what she does. I'm sorry she didn't tell you guys about it in a song, but just because she doesn't sing about something doesn't mean it didn't happen. So then Tree Payne, who's Taylor Swift's publicist, the one and only for, you, you know. You guys probably recognize her. She's like that very tall, beautiful redhead who's always with Taylor. She's like a really, most publicists aren't like front facing, but Taylor, everyone knows her publicist. She's popular within the Swifty community. Like she's a. And she's and like she's, only Taylor's publicist. She's not like someone who's just the publicist to the stars. Like she's Taylor's she's publicist. She's Miss Americana too. She's Taylor's mouthpiece. If she's saying something like she is speaking, she's the voice of Taylor. 
she's like a full-time employee just for Taylor. So this is Taylor speaking right. through Tree saying, she screenshotted this saying, enough is enough with these fabricated lies about Taylor from Dumois. There was never a marriage or ceremony of any kind. This is an insane thing to post. It's time for you to be held accountable for the pain and trauma you cause with posts like these. So I was shocked, absolutely guffawed to be reading this for a multitude of reasons. One, Taylor Tree never responds to anything. People say the crazy, like her thing is that she never responds. And it's a good strategy because you give air, nothing, you give nothing, life to right. it. I wouldn't have seen that Dumois post if not for Tree's response. So I found it even more shocking because I feel like maybe at one point people were reading every word Dumois said, and probably during COVID, like when everyone was really bored, they were really taking everything Dumois said as gospel. But then over the years, so many things came out to be not true. So now it's just like a fun thing that people enjoy. It's like tabloidy, but I don't think, and I would love for people to sound off in the comments. Like when you read something on Dumois, like what do you think about it? Because for me, at least I'm like, it's so 50-50. I, I don't really, I really don't give it much credence. So to find that Taylor Swift the biggest star, the Beatles of, of our generation, would be bothered by and respond and give air to something posted on Dubois. I find so shocking because from my point of view, something being posted on Dumois is kind of meaningless these days. Am I, I wrong? I No, it's le it holds less weight than it once did because a lot of things have come out to be not true. And also just people have are, are not as highly engaged with that sort of content as they once were. But... She, Dumois, like, sometimes will post something and is like, this is what people are saying, take it or leave it. That's what she does most of the time. It's like, she yeah. literally says, like, not verified rumors. Right. But here she's throwing her whole mm, weight, but I will die on this hill. Put it on my tombstone. Still, I don't think it was, it required a response from Tree because I think that, like, Tree and Taylor, are, are they're just above this. They, they're huge. They, like, but she's never really goes that hard for a rumor. Yeah. But also, like, does her going hard for a rumor move the needle in terms of public perception? I, I feel like no. I feel like when I think about blinds, like, I think about NT, and I feel like I got to that place. I used to, like, read them every day and be like, oh, my gosh. And then I got to a place where it was like, I'll keep this in the back of my mind about someone. But yes. it's not going to color everything that I think about them. But if he, like, said, I will die on this hill, put this on my tombstone, like, this is where I'm going to stake my claim. Like, this is what I know for sure. If I was, like, you know, of, uh, ooh, these the shirt has holes. So cool. Oh, I love thumb holes. Norma Kamali, queen. Um, if I was a fa uh, even a fan or a passive fan, I'd be like, oh, okay, so that's true. So let's backtrack a little bit. And so I just I also want to say, Jumois has responded. Yes, yes, yes. We'll get to we'll that We'll get to that, but let's talk about this. So a little bit of context for someone who might not be like as chronically online as me is that Taylor, like a few days ago, released a song that had been like in a... In a an exclusive, what's it called? Like a deluxe, a bon a deluxe bonus song. If you bought her CD, now there's ripped off versions all at all over TikTok. If you're a Swifty, like you know it, and you might not have ever actually streamed it. But this week, she actually put it on Spotify to say thank you for making me the number one girly. And the song is called "You're Losing Me," and it's very clearly about Joe Alwyn. I wouldn't marry me either. A pathological people pleaser who only wanted you to see her. It's very much like a breakup song, whatever. So. Nothing about that was particularly shocking, except then a day later after the song was released in order to promote the song, Jack Antonoff posted a picture of Taylor. And I think it was from the day they wrote the song. And he shared that the song was written in 2021. So that like made the Swifty spiral to be like, wait, Taylor's been unhappy in this relationship since 2021. Have they been broken up that long? So Dumois posting this was on the heels of everyone being like, wait, have these two really actually not even been together since 2021? And then she said, these two were actually married. I know it in my bones, whatever, whatever. So now the question is. Well, she said they had a marriage ceremony, but it was never made legal. The question is, what about this Dumois posting bothered Taylor so much? You want to know what I think it could be? What? Uh, I think that maybe... She, if she technically like had a ceremony where she was like married to Joe and she never told that to Travis and now Travis might be thinking like, do you have an ex-husband? Like, were you no, married to Joe? I don't think so. I, Claudia, Claudia, yes. And so she needs to put like adamantly state like I was never married before because like not that 
it would make Travis like think of her any differently, but that's something that you would disclose to a new partner. So it's like, wait, did she not tell me that she was married? So that's a kind of a crazy hypothesis. The one that I am choosing to believe that I do credit to Liz Woods, she put this on her story and it made a lot of sense, is that Taylor and Travis like are getting really serious and like the idea that they could be married or engaged sometime soon isn't out of the realm of possibility and so Jack Antonoff posting that like this song about the breakup was actually written in 2021 puts a lot more room between her two relationships making it easier for people to digest okay not that anyone had a something to digest the relationship seemed far enough apart for me but piggybacking off of that what I thought you were going to say is that she's taking this relationship very seriously she wants to perhaps marry him and she wants the world to know like that this would be her first and only marriage like if if now we know she had this little marriage with Joe like oh so this is a second marriage like it's different as opposed to like no I'm finally choosing to wed this man not no, that's any the man more, the more you say it it's not crazy but also totally separately there's a new Hulu documentary um about tra trailer and Travis um, with like sports experts and pop culture experts and we are on it. We are? They it, they, they reached out to us about like sitting They wanted down. us to be like experts on the the doc. We I didn't want to do it. No. But they still included us. Um, just like clips from our podcast. Obsessed. Because they were like talking about how the whole world is obsessed with this. And they say even the Toast podcast was talking about it. And they had a little clip of us. Oh my God, thank you. That's, yeah, some, that's the one perfect of the editors, amount of involvement for me. One of the editors is a toaster. Oh my God, I'm obsessed. Because they always do, whenever there's like a documentary about pop culture, they always do like a roundup of it in the news. And it's like, yeah, we should be in there. Yeah, no, it was very sweet. Oh my God, I'm going to watch it. Yeah. Um, it's not like the 25 minute mark. I watched the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you would have maybe watched it anyway because like that's your beat. Yeah. You like the beat. Was there any new information about trailer that you didn't know? No, no. It was very basic. It's for like an older person who is like, what's going on with this Taylor Swift? Got it. Okay, so that is what happened between Tree and Do last night. But then Do responded. But then Do responded. And honestly, by the way, when I by saw the way, that sorry. Tree like woke up and decided to drag Do by her hair, like I was quaking for Do. Okay, so that's what I was just about to say. Like, do you think Do Dadu is shitting her fucking pants? Because what I think maybe some people do realize and some don't. Like, Do is just one gal. It's not like a whole media company. It's just one girly who does all this work. She's very nice. Like. I would die. Right. So I would have thought that du Dadu Moi was shitting herself. Like, oh my God, she's going to like crawl into a hole for a little bit. Let this blow over. But then she responded. And her response, she had some big brass balls because she's doubling down. And I have more respect for that. And I actually think that's a better strategy than her kind of like cowering into herself. Well, if she does cower and just be like, oh, I'm sorry, no one will believe anything she ever says. Right, but so it's much easier to do that than it of is course. to stand your ground, especially because like pain and trauma. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, but it but it is easy to stand your ground anonymously. But she's not insiders know who she is. Like Tree knows who yes. she is. Yes, yes, yes. Um, also, she's like come out. There's art like she has. Has she? Like there was an article. I think that she contributed. There's like an article about do and who do is, and I, I feel like she. Vulture did a piece like we figured it out. Oh, it was a figured it out, not like do sit down, not do's coming out. No, it wasn't a do da do out debutante. Bomb. Okay, well, this is what do said in response. She said, Well, I make zero dollars from lying. Can publicists say the same? Also, Ooh. to relate something that is in reference to something that happened years ago to quote pain and trauma after what just happened seems like a poor choice of words. Either way, I apologize to Taylor. After what just happened? What so happened? The deadline article I'm reading thinks that it's about the fan in Rio. Oh. I, oh. of course, you know, think it's about October 7th. But yeah, that's what I was thinking too. That's I'm just like, where okay. my, yeah, pain and trauma, like, yeah. Right, right. Oh, 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 oh. But I do think it's about the fan. Mm. After what just, yeah, probably the fan. No, that response is like a knife. I don't think this was wise. It was, it's so out of character. But not wise for Tree? Yeah. It's so out of character to respond to anything. But I don't know. Does Dumois still have that sort of chokehold on the culture? Please sound off in the comments. Because for me personally, it doesn't re it doesn't penetrate anymore. Yeah. And there was a time, though, that it did. I don't think it was like Dumois posted this and everybody was like, oh, my God, Taylor's been married. Because apparently Dumois has been saying this for a while. Yes, she has. I think that maybe, you know, 
Kylie Kelsey is a big Dumois fan and she saw this and she's like, Travis, do you know that Taylor has been married? And then everything got blown up. I don't think Kylie Kelsey or really anyone in the Kelsey clan is reading tabloids. Like, I, honestly, I think if anybody was reading Dumois, Kylie Kelsey would be the last person. Yeah. Maybe Mama Kelsey loves Dumois. Like there's she's on her cruise. She's scrolling. There's no way. She, Mama Kelsey's tapping through her IG stories. By the way, so there's a celebrity cruise going on right now that like a lot of celebs are on. Mama Kelsey. Oh my God. That's the, the one that Ben was supposed to be on? That's the one that Ben was supposed to leave for a few days ago, but he stayed home with Theo and right. canceled his trip. I told him to go. I'm actually so glad he didn't. I could not be doing this by myself, but Ben was supposed to be there. Oh, I'm, he literally, I'm literally Madison Beer right now. You know, I was supposed to be in the video. I am glad that Ben is with you and with Do Dayu yeah. the first, but he should be on a cruise with Mama Kelsey. Like, that's what the world needs. No, Donna and Euphigenia, like a lethal combination. That's upsetting. I know. But there's no worthier cause to stay home for. Like, I don't have, there was nothing else to be Yeah, done. of course. But like, it sucks for celebrity cruises because it's a celebrity cruise line and they could have gotten Ben's offer celebrity and that just sucks for them. Yeah, but they do have Mama Kelsey and she was listening to Taylor Swift in the background of her story. Everyone yeah, I saw her. Freaking She's out so cute. While she was tapping oh, through Dumois. By the way, so Taylor and Andrea were she's supposed to be with Donna and the Kelseys in Kansas City for that game, but then the shows in Rio got postponed, so her schedule got fucked up. I do feel like the I don't think the families have met yet, and I do think they'll probably spend the holidays together. In Kansas City? Somewhere. They're saying she's like staying in Kansas City for a while. I don't know if Holiday House is going to happen. It's going to happen. Yeah, she's in Kansas City, even though she did leave to go to London last night to go to Beyonce's premiere for Renaissance movie. And Beyonce had a premiere in the States and Taylor wasn't there because she had a show. But I was like, damn, Beyonce showed up for you and you're not showing up for Beyonce. I was like, damn, that's kind of crazy. No, she got her but ass on a plane. She made it work. She got her ass on a plane. I'm sure she's back in Kansas City already. She just like flew in for this event. Um, so she is like home base is Kansas City and Travis like a few hours after Taylor landed in Kansas City Travis was seen at Trader Joe's in the local like Kansas City town and he was buying ice cream for Taylor and like people were freaking how do you know it's for Taylor I just feel like Travis is an athlete he probably doesn't need ice cream no I feel like he's like eats a million calories a day but what's more classic it's like babe I'm hungry can you go get me ice cream like it's for Taylor I think it's for both of them I think we oh, okay both, I think we all like ice cream I think they both do probably like ice cream. Sharing a spoon. So cute. One spoon. What flavor? Did anyone get the flavor? No, apparently like people in Kansas City were so respectful. Like, I saw that. Even, like there were videos of him walking around the store totally normally. Not one person went up to him. He was lovely. Everyone was well behaved. So I'm sure that's why he loves his town so much. They really respect him even at this level. Like they're leaving him alone. Yeah, that's hysterical. Okay, so yeah. that is what went down between Tree Taylor and du Dadu Moi. And I just want to go on the record saying like this was an uncharacteristic move of Tree and Taylor and I do actually don't think it was the right move. And one more question. Do you think they had a ceremony? No. I do not think they would have responded so publicly, which they never do, if there was even a glimmer of truth to it. Because that's an insane thing to do. I think it's one of those things where a ceremony can be interpreted into a lot of different things. And in Dumois, they're talking about the same event. And in Tree's mind, this was not a marriage of any kind. And in Dew's mind, it's like, oh, this was a ceremony in the elk of a wedding. Elk, yeah. Wedding elk. Yeah, it's possible. Oh, I have to add that to the list of words that we're never going to use properly again. Or say properly, because it's like ilk. No, no, but... It's ilk, but I'm saying the wrong word. Like, elk is an animal. Oh, yeah, so you're saying it wrong, but you're using it right. I guess it, it both, yeah. Okay, just going to add that. Great. There was another well, you one, know what? too. We can't be held back by, like, social constructs and words and their meanings because we are the elk of dreamers, you know? We are. Also, language is ever-evolving. And why, not, why can't we put our spin on it? It's so true. Language is, for me at least, it's interpretive. You know what it's giving? The Tower of Babel. The Tower of Babel. It always comes back to the Tower of Babel. 
So true. The Tower of Babel is my Roman Empire. Like really one of them that I'm constantly yeah. like cross referencing in my head. Like hmm. Tower of Babel. What a yeah. lesson. What a lesson. What a you lesson. You wanna know what the tower the moral of the story of Tower of Babel is? Shut the fuck up. No. It's about girl bossing too close to the sun. Hmm. Literally. Hmm. It's beautiful. Are you ready for our next story? Yeah. Kelly Clarkson's ex, Brandon Blackstock, must pay her over $2.6 million for unlawfully procured business deals. Obsessed. Okay, if there was like, we used to do this in our family, like Weenie of the Week. Oh my God, have we ever told the toasters <laughs> about Weenie of the Week? It was one of the most hurtful things like ever because we would do just like the sisters and we wouldn't do it every week. No, but we, when it's ever so like someone would remember, we would do Weenie of the Week and we would like- We'd all nominate one other person. We couldn't nominate ourselves, no, a obviously. a sister, not a person in the world. Like it was oh, yeah. between the four of us and we had to nominate one of the sisters as the Weenie of the Week and cite what they did that was Weenie-ish. And the way like you and Olivia only ever chose me and Margot, you and Olivia never won We formed Weenie an alliance. Week. It was always me or Margot, and it was just like it was stupid because it wasn't fair. No, I mean it doesn't seem like like the most fair and generous of spirit sort of game. No, I hated Weenie of the Week. It was always me. Well, I just want to say like Brandon Blackstock is the Weenie of the Year. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot why we were talking about Weenie of the Week. Brandon Blackstock is the Weenie of the Week every week. Like. <laughs> This oh my man God. just takes L after L after L, and it's all because of his previous his actions. actions. So it's like, it's justice. No, it's actually really beautiful to, to be watching someone face the consequences of their actions over and over again. Like, this is a bad person, you know, who stole and manipulated and took advantage the woman, of, of the woman he loved, the mother of his children. Like, how rotten can you be? And it's like, of course, mother of children, woman you love, like, you should never betray her. But also, like, it's Kelly Clarkson, America's sweetheart, like, pure goodness. No, and I know that the judge presiding over this case, like, he was calling and voting for Kelly Clarkson. Like, that's Kelly how deep, Stan. That's how deep the Kelly Stanhood runs. Like, but it's actually so true. Like, because when American Idol was on, like, even if you watch it religiously or you just like passive, were, were a living person, you knew you had it, you were impacted by Kelly Clarkson. You don't so think actually, the judge was calling for Justin Guarini? No, was anyone? I think that when Kelly cried during piece by piece, the judge cried during piece by piece. One thousand percent. And now we're and seeing the judge. I just think it's it's going to be impossible for Brandon Blackstone to get a fair trial in this country because of Kelly's impact. Well, you should think about who you're harming then. Well, it's you should true. just also just think about harming in general. Harming in general. It's a good lesson. Brandon, I love this. Here's the story. Brandon Blackstock helped orchestrate several business deals for his ex-wife Kelly Clarkson while serving as her manager, but he wasn't supposed to, a California labor commissioner has ruled. Earlier this month, Clarkson scored a victory in her latest legal battle against Blackstock. According to documents obtained by People, he's been ordered to pay her $2.6 million for overstepping in his managerial role and unlawfully procuring deals that should have been handled by a talent agent. His legal team has filed to appeal the ruling. I hate this man with every fiber of my being. And I just feel like in the last like year or two, Kelly's had a couple of really big legal wins because she didn't do anything wrong and the law is on her side. And the ju you know the judicial system is slow, but the wheels of justice are turning in Kelly's favor. So this is just another one. You know, she won that child support thing. She won the prenup. He tried to have the prenup void. Like he's just been a dick at every turn. And he and took to her house. See, yeah, the ranch. And he was ordered to give it back. To see him losing brings me great joy. Yeah. The wheels of justice turn slowly. And of course, you know, not to bring gender into it, but to see a man, like a greedy little fuck, try and leech off a successful woman who's, you know, a mother, an entrepreneur, a, com a, a touring a singer, a daytime host, like to see an unemployed slob try and bleed her out, you know, suck her dry, it makes me sick. The men should be ashamed. It's it's terrible. Yeah. No, especially I feel like there are a lot of men who like when they're married to a woman, they try and like, you know, manage and uh -huh. take advantage and make themselves and ride the coattails. And in, to some degree, that's like, you know, that's their job and that's lawful. And they're just, you know, why should someone else have this job if I can do it? But right. the fact that he was also being like a crook, a crook about it. Yeah. 
Like, why don't you just like ride her coattails lawfully? You know, why don't you just like be normal and be like a stay at home husband? Like, I'm sure Kelly would have been happy to make the fortune and you just not do anything. No, but he's also, he's a music manager. Like, have other clients. Don't shit where you eat. Uh, by the way, he did have other clients. That's what's so greedy about this. He was Blake Shelton's manager. And when Kelly and him decided to get divorced, Blake Shelton took, you know, Kelly's side and dropped him as his manager. But up until that point, like, he had a career of his own. Yeah. So why you got to go and steal, too? Why you got to be so mean? No, I hope he like I want him to lose every penny to his name like you're gonna be a criminal cool Kelly's coming for you yeah Kelly's coming for you are you ready for our next story what number is this three yes it's some Disney tea from back in the day I don't know if you've seen it but we always love Disney tea from back in the day so Kim Rhodes who played okay, the mom I know I actually, right before we started watching this, I was watching a clip of her on Christy Carlson Romano's podcast. Exactly. Kim Rhodes, who played the mom on Sweet Life and Zach and Cody. She played the the singing mom, who's the mother to the twins. Um, the cabaret. She was kind of like cabaret with the countess before she it was She cool. was kind of like a crazy queen. No, I was obsessed with her. Of course you were, because she was living her dream, singing. She, yeah, she, she was, sings on a cruise ship. Like, it takes her everywhere. She's singing at a luxury hotel. No, and she, like, her passion afforded her children, like, amazing opportunities. She was an incredible mom. She was a single, a single mom, mom who works two jobs, who loves her kids and never stops. A gentle hand and the heart of a fighter. She's literally a survivor. Yeah, so she... Choked up as she recalled an incident on Christy Carlson Romano's Vulnerable Bubble podcast where she claimed that an executive allegedly body shamed Dylan Sprouse in front of the show's cast and crew. She said the executive had screamed at craft services that sh there should be no more junk food until Dylan looked like his twin brother Cole, at, who also starred on the Disney Channel sitcom. She defended the then teenager at the time and fucking lit into the network bigwig, whom she refused to name. I was like, you do not have the right to say that to a child. You do not have the right to be writing for children if that is your attitude. Never again do you speak like that. Never. She also recalled a time where the boys were, uh, I think it was Dylan, he was instructed to make a fat joke about her on the show mm. and he wouldn't say it. He just kept skipping over it, she told listeners. She said it was like in the middle of a chunk of dialogue, so he kept skipping this laugh line. Finally, we get in front of the studio audience and he skips it and the executive producer screams, cut, Dylan, say the line. And he goes, I would never disrespect any woman that way, let alone this woman. You, oh write, my God. you write something funny and I'll say it. Oh, okay, slay with the with the nine year old. Um, That's yes. like kind of one of those quotes that it's like. Yeah, it's I don't like, know sure. that a nine year old said, I, or he was probably thirteen. Like, I will never disrespect any woman that way, let alone this woman. But I do believe that, like, he he said some iteration of that and he, a child's version of it, and that he refused to say the joke and refused to disrespect her. But there was a lot of mutual standing up for one another. Yeah. That Between story about craft services, when I saw the clip, like that was wild. Because I do remember a time, of course, where the twins looked different, but they were, you know, pubescent growing kids. boys. Like, that's, that's what happens. And honestly, I think for a lot of people, it was how they started telling Dylan and Cole apart. And I think it actually, in the end, contributed to a lot of their individuality, like for yeah. real. Yeah. I do, because I think as a twin, they were so similar looking, like the hair, the clothes, everything. So I think it established them as like two different people at first. And I don't think it was a bad thing. And to know, I feel like, so there's like this conversation being had now on social media, especially on TikTok, where there's a couple Dis former Disney stars who are grown now, whose entire brand is what basically Christy Carlson Romano is doing, having a podcast, inviting others on and talking about their show. So the three kids from Ned's Declassified School Survival Guide have their own show that's like, you know, being talked about. Annalise Vanderpoel, who is Chelsea from That's a Raven, has her own. Christy Carlson Romano, of course, The Wizards of Waverly Place. Um, and people on TikTok are like dragging them because like it's annoying and it's all they talk about and all their TikToks, everything is just about this one job that they had. Um, but I don't feel that way about this particular conversation because I, w I watched a lot of this podcast and Kim Rhodes talks also about how like she's very famous. People recognize her. She doesn't have a career. She says she's, you know, virtually unbookable she doesn't have health insurance like I actually did think it was an interesting conversation um and Kim Rhodes seems like a really really nice lady yeah no that sort of conversation doesn't bother me I feel like it's the opposite that bothers us when people are known from their one show and they don't talk about it and they're like think they're better than that 
But see, as like a, a child star, there's really no way to win. Because if you don't talk about it, we are like, oh my God, it's annoying. Talk about the thing. And if you talk about it, they're like, oh my God, will you ever stop talking about it? Like, what? Are, how really? How are you supposed to exist post, post that? Well, that's like anything. It'll never make people happy. So just talk about it to the degree in which you're comfortable. Yeah, I feel like someone who does a good job of that is Josh Peck. Yeah. Because he obviously has this thing. Drake and Josh, that's so huge. But he really did a good job of like, he talks about it if you ask him about it. But he doesn't make it his personality and he'll he'll engage with like the funny hug me brother type of things. But he also has a life and a family that he talks about and fatherhood and he was in the vlog squad temporarily. Like he has other things that people, I feel like when I just said Josh Peck, your, your immediate thought wasn't Drake and Josh, right? No, it's good guys. Right. It's good guys. And right. Oppenheimer. Yeah, so I think he's kind of a, a perfect example of how to toe the line, but I imagine it's very difficult. Yeah, you know who I feel like actually does a pretty good job considering it's hard? Who? Hillary Duff. Yes, but Hillary Duff is different because she went on to be in things that were just as big as yeah. Lizzie McGuire. Yeah, that's true. So it's it's a difficult spot to be in. Yeah. Well, okay, TikTokers, if you don't like it, don't listen to it. Yeah. And I, I thought that Christy Carlson Romano actually did a really good job with this interview because Kim Rhodes was like dropping truth bombs after truth bombs. And... I thought that story about craft services was just wild. And it's so uh, something I could see happening. Oh, of course. The people who run those ch kid shows are disgusting. Disgusting. It's like, this is just, I feel like, a tip of the iceberg. I mean, and the way that they make kids feel, the way that they talk to kids, like, that, you know, doesn't even go below the surface of some of the stuff that happens. Right, but I always felt like those types of stories were really reserved for the other networks, like especially Nickelodeon. I think Nickelodeon, and if you read Jeanette McCurdy's book, there's so much in there about Nickelodeon. I don't really know of a lot of traumatizing moments or stories that I can think of from Disney. I think Disney was very like exploitative. Uh, you know, you think of like Miley and Selena and Demi, like yeah. they're all like traumatized from Disney, not necessarily in the way that some of the Nickelodeon kids might have been traumatized. And I think we're all talking about like Dan Schneider. Yeah. Um, and the allegations against him. So I don't, I hadn't heard anything about that like at Disney, but I think it was, you know, as far as kids go, like a toxic work environment. Yeah, and they're no, not and, like, treating they were working kids too much. With, like, they're not treating kids with kid gloves. Yeah, not treating kids as kids. Yeah, like they couldn't get, you know, they have to do their schooling and they have to do their show and they're the the centerpiece of the show. There's so much pressure on them and their kids going through puberty and their emotions yeah. are heightened and like no one's there caring for them. They're just like, get back to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's very like a sweatshop, like 24 seven. So I don't think they like look back on it fondly, but I think maybe an adult like Kim Rhodes in certain, like when you're an adult and you're on this like great show and you have a lead role, but it's not all on you. Like it's a more of a palatable work environment, except for when they're like fat shaming everyone. Right, right, right. She just seemed like a really, like she had a great hat on her shoulders in the interview. She like looks really similar. She just has a big arm tattoo. Um, she seemed like a, like a sweet lady. She reminded me a lot of her character. Like yeah. a very maternal energy, very calm, peaceful. I really like her. We need a Sweet Life of Zack and Cody reboot. Do we? Yeah, with her and the boys. Everyone. Yeah, actually, I want everyone. In terms of, Mr. Mosby, in terms, London. In terms of that show, Maddie. There's, a, there's actually a lot of actors from that show who went on to have, usually it's just like the star. But we have Dylan and Cole, Brenda Song, Ashley Tisdale. There's quite a few people who made it out. Even Mr. Mosby. Does he act in other stuff? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure he was um, convicted of manslaughter in, in like 2014 or something. What? Yeah. Phil Lewis is his name, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, never mind. Am I right about manslaughter? Why did Phil Lewis get arrested? He was involved in a horrendous tragedy. Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah. Are you ready for our next story? Is it our next story that's brought to you by L'Oreal? It is. This episode of The Toast is brought to you by the new L'Oreal Paris Bright Reveal Dark Spot Serum and Broad Spectrum SPF 50 Daily Lotion. Dark spots, game over. 
So if you want to visibly fade all different types of dark spots, you have to check out these products from L'Oreal. Dark spots, a lot of us notice them mostly in the summer, but they are year round. You have to be protecting your skin with SPF. And then if you do get dark spots, you can treat them with these L'Oreal products. So the L'Oreal Dark Spot Serum, it's the Bright Reveal 12% Dark Spot Serum, visibly fades all type of dark spots up to 40%. And after 12 weeks, up to 40% less visible on post acne marks, 43% less visible dark spots, and 49% more even tone. In one week, it starts fading even the most stubborn dark spots and after two weeks your skin will look clearer skin texture will look more refined and smooth and it's made for all skin tones it's suitable for sensitive skin the formula is validated by dermatologist then they also have the bright reveal spf daily uv lotion you should use this before you get dark spots it'll help protect your skin 100% of dark spots are all intensified by the sun. This product is lightweight and non-greasy. It's a sunscreen that has an invisible texture. It blends seamlessly with all skin tones and it primes really well with makeup. We should all be wearing SPF under our makeup. A lot of them can leave like a white cast and just leave your skin feeling like icky and clogged. This SPF Bright Reveal 50 Daily Lotion from L'Oreal is fabulous. Discover the new Bright Reveal Dark Spot Duo. Visit Target online and in store to buy yours today. And those two products are the L'Oreal Bright Reveal 12% Dark Spot Serum, and the Bright Reveal SPF 50 Daily UV Lotion. Today's episode is also brought to you by State Farm. The State Firm Personal Price Plan helps you create an affordable price just for you. The plan is all about being personal to you and your needs. That means you're going to get the coverage you want, a policy that helps cover what's important to you, and an affordable price just for you. Because after all, life is just better when you can personalize your experiences. So think about it like this. From your go-to coffee order to your favorite pair of sweatpants, we know that you love to personalize your entire day just like we we do now I don't want to get into you know I don't want to fight this morning on this beautiful Friday right okay so let's Our, just leave it let's leave it at this like we are different yeah like you like a warm bowl for lunch mm -hmm. and you like a breakfast taco for breakfast and that's just you know a very small indicator of how different we are when it comes to insurance we have such different needs I mean you have not one but two cars you have dependents you live in a different state you're a homeowner I don't have much to my name, but I still require insurance. You know, I'm a renter. And that's what State Farm gets it. And that's what the State Farm per price, personal price plan is all about. They believe that insurance should work the same way. Your plan, your coverage, your selections can and should all be personalized by you. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or go to statefarm.com today. Option, prices vary by state. Options selected by customer. Availability and eligibility may vary. You want to you wanna try it? Close this out with a little jingle. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. That was pretty good. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Prices vary by state. Options selected by customer availability and eligibility may vary. Thank you, Claudia. You're welcome. Okay, our next story, a little clarity on one of the breakups from this past week. Dave Portnoy reveals the reason behind his split with Silvana. Okay. So Dave Portnoy was on his podcast, BFF's Pod, just one week after she revealed they're no longer together. And this is what he said. Because a lot of people were like wondering why they broke up. There was the Raquel rumor, which obviously oh, wasn't true. I'm sorry. If people believe the Raquel rumor. No, no. I don't all, think people do. But people but are I'm still saying, waiting. We need to all like use critical thinking sometimes. Like the way rumors just get spread so fast. Like people are being stupid. Yeah. Like he, you're being dumb. Use your brain. He, he said, didn't hook up with Raquel. Quote, we were dating for three years and I guess you get to a point where you think maybe there's a difference in what somebody wants and what the other person wants and without going into too much detail, I just didn't think I could give Silvana kind of what she deserves. She's so beautiful, she's funny, she's smart, she's all these things. He admitted that it was probably a me issue and he doesn't think that he is the guy she's looking for and is going to be able to provide her with what she needs down the road. He said he felt like he was, quote, stealing Silvana's youth, but didn't elaborate on whether or not it had to do with the brunette beauty wanting to settle down. That's that's probably what it was. It's giving, yeah, like, course. Scott Disick, Shep and Taylor, like, I don't want to be married. I don't want to have kids. And, like, a, a young girl is, like, okay with that up until a certain point. No, and a young girl, every girl thinks, like, yeah, he says that, but I'm different. Yeah, and, like, we have a, a great relationship for three years. Even the way he's talking about her on the podcast. She was his best friend. He misses her so much. He's very concerned and, like, wants good things for her. It literally is exactly Shep and Taylor, if you watch Southern Charm. Like, they were such a great couple. Shep was so happy. Taylor loved him so much and, like, was waiting for him to get it. But there are men who just yeah. never will settle down. You can be the perfect person Girl. inside and out and do everything and like be there ready willing and able and they just don't want that I don't understand it but that's just them no same so like I, I wasn't particularly surprised by this breakup I think there's really only so long you can be in a relationship with that doesn't progress before things get 
troublesome. And that's as, exactly a, as what a happened young here. woman, when you have like, you know, desires for what you. you want your life to look like. I mean, if you're someone who, if you're a young girl who never wants to get married and never wants to have kids, like you should call Dave Portnoy. It's so true. But I think even sometimes young girls go into like a relationship like that. Oh, I don't care about like marriage and kids. But then you grow up within the relationship and those things start to matter for you. And then the relationship can't work. But right. I just like can't understand. I feel this way when I'm watching Southern Charm. I felt this way about Scott Disick with Sophia Ritchie. Like, and he's always dating young girls because a girl at 21, yeah, she doesn't want to get married yet. Right. But when she's 25, she's like, hey, what What's about that on? marriage? Yeah. I don't understand these men who are so, so against like marriage and, and no, kids. No, the thing is, same. Because if you're going to be in a three-year monogamous relationship, like that's marriage. Getting married changes nothing from being in a committed relationship making the jump to marriage quite literally your life doesn't change at all I understand people being very hesitant to have kids like that's your whole life being flipped on a dime but the fear of commitment while being in a committed relationship makes no sense to me yeah yeah people are very like freaked out about marriage you're living with someone you're monogamous you do everything together you hang out with her family she hangs out with your family how is that different than just being married I think the kids is a big piece of it I think like for everyone it's like okay for well we're for getting married then we're having kids therefore right. we cannot get married I feel like yeah. the men feel that way and also the women feel that way like I don't want to necessarily be married to someone that I can't have kids with if I want to have kids yes no 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 for sure so that answers that and it makes sense I just like why why no but also Dave Portnoy a lot of people forget was married right a Does million years ago no no that would be crazy. Yeah. I don't know what happens to men like this, like Shep. Yeah. And I mean, Scott obviously has kids, but does it ever change? Like, no. I mean, Do they George become Clooney. like that guy in their 60s? Yeah, who's like finally ready? George Clooney. Yeah. He dragged that Stacey Keebler around town for years. I don't know he felt a little different he was always kind of dating like age appropriate women like yes yes but they never ever ever got serious past like just being in a committed relationship never engaged never married never kids yeah then I don't know if it's the woman like was Amal different but you know he dated beautiful successful smart women his whole life yeah they were all wonderful wives could be wonderful wives and mothers and they all went on to be wonderful wives and mothers yeah it's not about the woman it's the, it's like that thing from um Sex in the city, it's really it's the perfect um, metaphor. It's every, every man is a cab. Yeah. And if you hail one when his light is on, it's just timing. It's not you. Yeah, it's timing. But I don't know how like people like this change or when or why they would. Maybe they get older and they start to like have an existential crisis and they're like, yeah. let me try something different. But whenever I, like I, to me, like Shep and Dave are the same person and I just yeah. like, don't see them ever changing. No, yeah. Shep is also just very stubborn. Yeah. I don't know, Dave, but I... In this situation, like, if you were watching Southern Charm right now, like, Taylor and Shep were the perfect couple. Like, she made yeah. him so happy. He literally, like, cried. Like, they shared a dog, and uh, Shep... It's Shep's dog, Craig, little Craig. Mm -hmm. And, like, when Shep sees Taylor with the dog who she had to leave when they broke up, like, he cries over, like, missing Taylor and their dog and their little family. And it's like, why not marry the girl? You love her so much. You love her so much. Even, like, when Paige was... She went down to South Carolina. She was like, Shep loves Taylor so much. Like... What if you just stayed with her and got married? No, I can't with people who refuse to be happy. Like, No, and I, also what's crazy is like Shep's parents are still together. So like what? He grew up in a loving home. <laughs> like what's the problem? Right, like back to Matthew Perry's book, he's never been able to have any sort of happiness when it comes to relationships. He was abandoned as a child that carried him through his entire life. Every year for his birthday, he would wish for his parents to get back together. His parents fucking hated each other like hate they maybe have been in the same room three times in the last 15 years like hated it and that is so prevalent his mother really never gave him attention she worked so hard she was a single mom all he ever wanted was attention he has a fear of abandonment like he just used to leave good relationships before that person left him like there's a psychological reason like he yes when he he's been it out, burned he has you know past pain he doesn't believe he has in mommy it. issues he can't he's never seen it if you can't see it you can't achieve it yeah, I believe Dave Portnoy's parents are also still married. What? Right, so like, what is this? I don't, I don't know. know. But like, girls, you can't change them. 
Yeah, if you're in one of these situations, like thinking you're going to be different, like I love you, I'm sure you're an amazing person, but you're not different. It's not about you. It's just about something. And sometimes it never, the flip never, the switch never flips for a man. Sometimes it does. It has nothing to do with the girl, but sometimes they don't. Do not be wasting your time in relationships like this. Like for real, it will, you will drive yourself mad and you'll think it's about you when it's not. Yeah, well, at least he said it's a me problem. Right. And at least he was kind enough to realize he's stealing her youth and like she should get on with it. And I have to imagine he was pretty open with her from the beginning. Like, you yeah, don't get he into said, a three-year relationship without telling someone you don't want to get married. Yeah, they broke up, like, the Sunday before Thanksgiving. They were supposed to spend Thanksgiving together. They just, like, got into a conversation about the future. He said it wasn't the first conversation like this, but it was right. the last one. Yikes. Yeah, it was a little, like, out of left field, considering it's the holidays. The timing, like, wasn't great. Time. I think their parents were both in town, like, ready to Yikes. spend. But that's it. That's how the cookie crumbled. Speaking of cookies, are you ready for our fifth and final story? I am. I love this story. Subway announces foot-long cookies and is giving them out for free on Monday. So again, if there's a free snack, the toast is going to let you know where to find it. <laughs> and this one is a special one because it's a foot-long cookie. But it's also Subway. And the reason why I wanted to talk about this story is we rail on Subway all the time. We don't eat their sandwiches. The stores smell like shit. But their chocolate chip cookies are amazing. Yeah, and I, they must be in like a special, you know, vacuum sealed vault because they don't smell like the rest of the store. No, it's true. It's true. So the fact that they're doing something different with their cookies and, you know, they're known for their foot long. So it's like a funny, you know, it's like literally it looks like a piece of bread. It's a foot long cookie. cookie. Imagine getting two of those and putting a little bit of ice cream between them. Mm, chef's kiss. You should go. Treat yourself. A hundred percent. On Monday, though, when it's free. I love this sort of ingenuity in marketing and baking. And I just, I give this tens, tens, tens across the board. The sub chain announced that it will add 12 inch cookies to menus nationwide in early 2024. But before adding the foot long dessert across the country, Subway is handing out the new dessert for free at select locations next week. So listen up. Monday, December 4th is National Cookie Day. And fans can visit a restaurant in Chicago, Dallas, Miami, and New York City to snag okay. one free footlong cookie with any purchase of any footlong sub. Okay, you have to buy a sub, so it's not like totally free. Turdy? You have to buy a sub, so it's not totally free. Oh. Uh, uh, Get then a tuna sandwich. Doesn't he love their tuna? Um, or he hates it. He It's not real he tuna. He used to eat it a lot as a kid, and then it came out a few years ago. There's actually not even a 1% trace of tuna fish in their tuna salad. Got it. But wait, this just reminded me of something. Okay. I saw something on TikTok over the weekend. It was just like the, the biggest chain restaurants in the United States in terms of uh, locations. Okay. I want you to guess. McDonald's. Is number one. Yes. Number two? Subway. Yes. Well, just because we're talking about it and you like... Don't you find and that? And you seem surprised. Strange. I I can't say that I do. I'm not an expert on the matter because I'm, I don't keep up with Subway. Like if there's a Subway, if I pass a Subway, I, just, I don't register it. If I pass a McDonald's, goes to Number three. Taco Bell. It's like a different category. You're not, you're, you have to think a little bigger, like chains. <laughs> A drink chain? Starbucks. Yes. Four? You're never going to guess it. Dunkin'? shocking. No. Uh, Red Robin? KFC. Oh, that's not that crazy. Six? Can you just tell me? Burger King. Okay. Seven, Pizza Hut. Eight, Domino's. Nine, Dunkin'. Ten, Krispy Kreme. Taco Bell is Ten 11. Krispy Kreme? To me, they're like... So random. A diamond in the, like, a needle in a haystack. You can never find one. Right, but this is just about location. So I do think it's regional, like, to certain areas. No, so there are people who have Krispy Kreme aplenty. The way that we have Dunkin' in New York, they have Krispies? Yes. Where can we move to? They have Krispy Kreme. Over 10,000 locations. To put in perspective, McDonald's, which is number one, has 40,000 and Subway has 37,000. Starbucks has 36,000. That's because McDonald's is not a burger business. It's a real estate company. Right. And we learned that from, what was that? The founder. The if founder. you haven't seen The Founder, add that to your list of family movies. It's It's amazing. so good. Also, I want to just talk about something for a brief second. And it's about Spotify Wrapped. Okay. Are you starting to see like more and more inconsistent information coming out of Spotify Wrapped? I'm not really looking for inconsistency. I'm not looking for it either, but like everybody's listening sounds brings them to Provo, Utah. Yeah, I heard about that. Mine was too. What was your I listening of, sound? 
I didn't see that statistic. I didn't even know what people were talking about. I must have tapped through it. They had like some random statistics. You listen most similarly to Provo, Utah, like a bunch of people. Like what's going on in Provo? That's where those schools are. I was going to say what's going on in Provo is illegal. Like those, that's where those ESG schools are that. Where Paris Hilton went, Provo Canyon. Yeah. They're like I don't think they get to listen to music there. Right. Or I guess what they're saying is you have the same sort of music taste as an angsty teen. Or which... EGS, not ESG. I have the same music taste as an angsty teen. Anyways, I'm just seeing like, and people, they're not making sense. I feel like there was some plant planting mm-hmm. going on on the lists. Well, Spotify, and you have to 24 be honest, hours to respond. To bring it all the way to the top, was Taylor even the number one most streamed artist or did they want in on the Taylor I do think she was. I really do. Like, I think it's fairly. I think um, it's believable because, like, she's everybody's listening to her. Her she had like three albums. Nobody had Taylor Swift in her top five and was like, "What? I never listened to Taylor Swift." I know. I'm just saying, Spotify rap doesn't seem as data driven as it once did. That's all I'm saying. Oh wow, that's a huge accusation to hurl. It's a huge. I just feel like there were a couple things that were planted in there, not necessarily Mm -hmm. Taylor, but then it makes you question the validity of Taylor. If there's one lie, it makes you question what else no, could be a lie. Right, if, if there, it's rotten at its core. If, yeah, if there's a piece of rot, you have to peel away. Is the whole thing rotten? And I've never felt like that about Spotify Wrapped. You haven't. You're always, always lauding it for I'm its I'm such a champion accuracy. of Spotify Wrapped. You really are. But we have to be asking the hard questions or else we're not doing our jobs. So true. Now we can go embark on the weekend, have our lunch. Let's do it. I hope everybody has an amazing, restorative, and relaxing weekend. Thank you so much for listening to The Toast, the Millennial Morning Show, where we deliver the fast side stories you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching us on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. We're also available as podcast editor, podcast community outside Spotify, iTunes, Instagram, 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 Instagram,